Welcome to another episode of Shots from the Winchester podcast brought to you by Greencastle Consulting. And today we have a special guest, Rebecca Parks. Uh, she's the regional president of Northeast USO. The USO stands behind you from enlisted to the time that you transition out of the service. And they're also helpful to your families. And so Rebecca is going to give us a brief history on the USO and a little bit more about what services are available through the USO. So let's get started. Um, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Very much so. And um, let's get real brief history on what the USO is or how long the USO has been around and just a little bit about how the USO started. Great. So the USO uh, was founded in 1941. We've been around for over 80 years, and we have been by the side of service members and their families during that whole long period of time mm. uh, through many different uh, generations, uh, decades, uh, through different war and peace times. And the really uh, amazing thing about the USO is, is that we've evolved over those 80 years significantly, mm -hmm. and we've had to do so not only because of where our service members need us has changed, mm -hmm. but also how they need us has changed uh, mm -hmm. over the generations. And so we've stayed core to uh, many of our programs and services, such as our entertainment. Mm -hmm. We have entertainers all over the world now who are both virtually and in person doing entertainment tours and boosting morale for our service members, uh, especially Especially those who are deployed and overseas. And that's something that we've done since the start. Um, you know, a lot of people remember the USO about with Bob Hope um, mm, and other entertainers yeah. like that. And, you know, the way that I like to think about it now is, is that there's not just one entertainment that entertainer that's really important. It's many. Mm. There's the YouTubers, the people on gaming on Twitch and other digital uh, uh, platforms like that. Mm. And the way that we can connect with service members has changed significantly. So, our core is to boost morale, be by the side of our service members and families. We've opened centers all over the world. We now wow. open, we operate over 275 locations. Wow. Uh, we have both physical locations, mobile centers that can travel to hard to reach locations. And we also have programs like Program in a Box and USO to Go, where mm -hmm. there are locations that we can't send staff or not able to build a physical location where people can come to. So we bring the USO to them. And so wow. our evolution has been that, you know, we are really aiming to be by the side of service members wherever they need to be, um, wh whenever they need to be. And we've been very creative and innovative in how we de deliver that, mm -hmm. including some uh, military virtual programming that we deliver all digitally and can reach service members uh, both in physical locations and remotely all over the world. Um, I would say also we, you know, cre create new programs all the time. Uh, gaming is a newer program for us. Our transitions program, which is at the end of uh, someone's uh, service where they're looking at making a transition into civilian career, the USO is there for them at that time as well. Wow. Um, and even programs like our canine program, where we kind of bring a furry friend, mm. uh, you know, to, to boost some morale during some challenging times. That's great. And uh, one of the things that Greencastle does is that we like, like we have some of the service dogs okay. come in here and help them train right. in, inside of location so that they can train to be out with other uh, service members right. and stuff like that, which is really, which is really cool. So can you speak to the, the commitment that the USO has for the service members and their family. Yeah, I mean, our commitment is that, you know, we are there for all of those who serve. Mm -hmm. There are every, you know, all the people out there who have made the commitment to whether it be the person serving and their families. And so a lot of what we do, it's really important that we're supporting families as well, whether that be during periods of long deployments mm -hmm. or changes of location where they're moving frequently. Mm -hmm. um, and the USO is really there as a community for all of those different times uh, throughout someone's military service. Um, and, you know, it's our commitment to those who have made a commitment to our country mm. that we're there for them. And our belief is, is that the USO is the way that all Americans should could should should support our troops and their families. Um, and we are a 501c3. We're a nonprofit. Um, we uh, work very closely with the government, but we are not a government agency. And so okay. we need the support of all Americans, uh, companies that are out there like mm. Greencastle's support for us mm. uh, to be able to fulfill our mission. That's amazing. One of the things that um, that gets in my head is when I was uh, overseas in Bosnia and um, I got to see Joan Jett play. 
Okay. And that was USO. Yeah. Um, they had a lot of movies that came over. Uh, I saw The Matrix over there. <laughs> uh, a few other things. And uh, I, I experienced the USO, um, but not being aware that the USO was actually the, the cause of those things that, mm -hmm. that gave me that, um, that peace of mind that, that made me feel like I was nor in a normal place, but even though it was a war zone. Um, what does it mean to service members when they receive these care packages from people overseas? Can you walk us through that? Like, how does the service package get put together? And then what does it mean to the service members when they receive these? Absolutely. A care packages is one of our largest programs um, and a very meaningful one. Uh, in, in many ways, it's a token of appreciation mm. where people here are packing them. So we mm. pack the care packs with many of our corporate partners and volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, and it is a way for on the receiving end when they are either uh, provided to service members right before a deployment or sent overseas to units that have requested them. Uh, when they receive them, you know, I think the main feedback that we get is it was uh, a, a, uh, Obviously the supplies are great, you yeah. know, there's snacks, there's toiletries, we have different care packs, mm -hmm. um, but really it's that sense of connection that mm -hmm. it's a token that the someone back home is thinking of them. It makes them think that they are being appreciated back home mm -hmm. and um, that there is that sense of connection. And mm -hmm. so I think it's really our way of, uh, again, providing goods and services, mm. but also that connection point so that they know that people back home, their their family, their country, their community is thinking about them. Wow. And and that uh, on, the, on the way that they're put together, it's also a way for our corporate partners and volunteers mm. to be part of that. It's doing something mm. tangible that they can then uh, send a note within a care package that mm. says, thank you for your service, or we're thinking about you, oh, wow. and uh, ways of, again, making that connection. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing, especially when you're out there, you, you feel, I mean, you're surrounded by people, but you feel alone. You're out there, you know, your family's here, you know, you're in a foreign country. Uh, so that, it's amazing to feel that, to see that. And I've experienced that myself. So like, I, I totally appreciate the USO for um, being out there and, and making these, um, uh, these packages and, and things for the service members, because it's important. You know, so you're the regional president and that's a that's a position. I mean, like uh, you're dealing with a lot of things happening from how far from like. So our region is from Maine down to Delaware, Maine to Delaware, um, wow. and it includes all of Pennsylvania. So it's great yes. to be here in the eastern part of the region and yeah. the Philadelphia area. Pennsylvania by itself is huge. Right. So there's a lot <laughs> We've got to from deal Philadelphia with. to Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we go all the way up into upstate New York near the Canadian border uh, wow. where we support. We have a large USO center at Fort Drum mm -hmm. where the 10th Mountain Division trains. And then we, of course, also uh, going down to Delaware, we support uh, with a USO center at Dover Air Force Base. Uh, Wow. which is really important piece of our mission, not only in the Northeast, but across the USO. Uh, we do have a Families of the Fallen program, mm. and we do support uh, those families in transit down to Delaware to meet their uh, loved ones during a very challenging time, mm. and uh, also support the dignified transfer process that takes place at Dover Air Force Base. Wow. Now, before you took this position, um, you had over 15 years of experience in the nonprofit field. What drew you to this position? So yeah, I've, I've, my, most of my career has been in, in the nonprofit space. I've worked with uh, an array of organizations, healthcare, higher education, uh, small and large nonprofits. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, you know, a lot of my uh, career path and choices have been about the purpose, mm -hmm. something I'm passionate about, and the position itself, which I think is also important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this opportunity came my way and I didn't have uh, a deep uh, appreciation or knowledge of the military community. Uh, my closest connection at the time was that my grandfather had served in World War II. Mm. Um, I knew very little from his experience mm. in that, um, but I knew that there were some sacred traditions and meaningful experiences that mm -hmm. that had as like in, in our family and right. what it meant to our family that he and uh, many of his uh, cousins and relatives 
did serve. Yeah. Um, and since I've had a, a you know a young cousin uh, who enlisted in the Navy from high school, and so I've seen it from a different experience since I've joined the USO. But it was really the draw to support a community that I think in some of our cities, especially in the Northeast, where there's not a huge military presence, mm -hmm. they are um, under m misunderstood. It's mm -hmm. not as uh, prevalent. Yeah. And so being able to be a voice that shares with our communities and our key markets up here in the Northeast, like mm -hmm. Philadelphia, New York City, Boston, uh, that we really do have a responsibility to support our service members and their families. And I think the USO um, is a really important and historic avenue for uh, us to do that. What is your day to day like? Because as a regional president, it just sounds <laughs> like so much is going on. The, the, what I love about the, the job and um, and even just the USO and how we operate, our day to day changes often and there's mm -hmm. a, a lot of different things to accomplish. Uh, so from, you know, part of our responsibility, uh, I've some of it's leading a team mm -hmm. uh, that's out there doing our mission delivery. So we have people out there in the field mm -hmm. who are on a day-to-day -day basis running the center or running some of our programs and services. Nice. And um, you know, our team oversees that that field work mm -hmm. um, and our mission delivery, which is you know essential uh, yeah. to everything we do day to day. Uh, we have a volunteer workforce that we partner with. So the USO at large has over 20,000 volunteers. Wow. And so without our volunteers, that mission also wouldn't be able to uh, be fulfilled. And so it's ensuring that our team and our volunteers are having the resources that they need to be successful. Mm -hmm. um, and that the people that, we're, that are serving the USO as employees and volunteers, mm -hmm. um, again, have the resources and the training and professional development that they need to be successful in each wow. of their roles. Yeah. Um, and then there's a lot of external facing work, you know, working with our corporate partners, our donors, foundations that support the USO, mm. um, building brand awareness across the region and finding community partners that can help us do that. Yeah. Uh, so the day to day shifts a lot. And then, of course, the environment that we operate in shifts on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, you know, the USO is often uh, most needed when we least expect it. Mm -hmm. um, and there are even a lot of global events happening right now that, you know, um, that are examples of, of that. Yeah. And uh, so we often are also looking at the future to the degree that we can predict it and making sure that we're set up for success mm. um, for, for the known and the unknown. Wow, that's, that's important. To note that you are, e even as a regional uh, president, that there's so much shift and so much change um, and evolving um, leads me into the question, what is the future for the USO is um, as you project into the future. Are there new challenges that are maybe coming that you're looking to head off, or are there any new developments, new programs? Uh, from a pro program side, we do have a whole host of core programs. I spoke about some of them: our K9 program, our transitions mm. program, um, are two examples of that. We also are heading into holiday season, mm. and so USO Holidays is another one of our core programs. While we celebrate holidays throughout the year, the end of year is a busy time as it yeah. relates to holidays, and often, if when families are separated, that's one of the more challenging times. And so we're ensuring that we're there both for service members who are deployed or in new locations as well as their families back on the home front. Mm -hmm. um, one of our uh, evolving initiatives that's not program related but hugely important to the organization is our brand and our evolving brand. Mm -hmm. And we've moved to branding that speaks about the people who serve. Mm -hmm. And so really honing in on that the USO is there for all of those people who are serving mm -hmm. the child who's moved to locations and has to go to a new school, the yeah. spouse who's away from uh, their their partner during the birth of a child, mm. um, and then just all of the other circumstances that people find themselves in that as it relates to military life. Mm. And so we are really evolving our brand to be more uh, about the well-being of the people who serve and really about those individuals and bringing their stories to life. Mm -hmm. And so that's a key strategic initiative for the organization to have our brand begin to represent that more and more mm -hmm. uh, in the market. That's awesome. Yeah. And to see that and to understand that the, uh, the USO is behind you um, as a service member. Um, and if you 
if you don't recognize as a service member, especially if you're active duty, um, if you don't recognize that, hopefully if you're listening to this now, you'll, you'll do some research and you'll figure it out. Um, also maybe help and support because um, support is very much needed. Um, where can someone find a way to support the USO? So the best way to learn more about the organization and to find ways to support us is to go to www.uso.org. Mm -hmm. uh, there are several resources on our website. Uh, our website links to some of the different local websites and the locations where we have centers. Oh, and nice. so you can drill down if you're in a location uh, and learn more about where you might find your nearest USO. Mm -hmm. And then of course, uh, uso.org slash donate brings you to all the resources for which someone could help either uh, make a monthly donation or make a one-time donation, as well as learn about other ways to get involved with the USO, including our volunteer opportunities. Mm. Um, as I mentioned, we are made up of over 20,000 volunteers, mm. many more volunteers than we have staff, and we really rely on those volunteers uh, to, to you know, deliver our mission on a day-to-day -day basis. That's amazing. That's really cool. Last thing I want to get into, um, I want to talk about a leadership's, uh, leadership tips. Um, we like to leave our audience with a leadership tip. And um, as, a, uh, as a regional president, that you're leading a lot of people. You're, 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 you've got a lot of people direct reports. Um, can, you expl can you tell us something that might be uh, helpful to someone that's a leader in their day-to-day -day practice, in their day-to-day -day work? Sure. Um, well, I'll, I'll leave two. I'll, I'll have two. Okay. Um, and I think both are important. One's a little bit more about the team and one's a little bit more about self. Okay. I think, you know, what I would say as a leader, um, I think it's really important to be self-reflective and self-aware. Mm, um, yeah. And so we all have our strengths and we all have weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big believer. I was uh, grew up an athlete. I played college athletics. You know, a team plays to their strengths. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a big believer in identifying and helping team members build and flourish in their strengths. Mm. Um, and also ensuring that to be self-aware and know what you you as a leader are better and not as good at mm -hmm. and making sure that you find team members who can help uh, fill some of those gaps for you and wow. really empower them to do that work and, um, and celebrate that. Mm. So I think from a team perspective, it's really kind of looking at the team as a whole mm -hmm. um, and help, helping everyone play to their strengths and build upon those strengths um, and empowering them to do that. So that would be tip number one. And then the second, I think, is more of a self tip. And it's really about time management. And so I kind of <laughs> talked about, yes. you know, how a day to day can change and evolve. And we are all in a lot of meetings often. Mm. And so I think one of the tips that um, I've taken on board and has been shared with me in the past is about how to time manage. Mm. Um, and the tip that I found most helpful to me and I've given to many others who have found it helpful is really creating a prioritized list. Mm. Um, and it sounds like yes. a simple task, but mm. if we were working off of nothing, mm. you know, the day can kind of take you in so many different directions. And then you end the day and it's thinking, well, what did I actually get done today? <laughs> so I'm a big believer in starting and finishing the day with a list and it's a evolving cycle. So you end the day, you look at the list for the next day and recalibrate, mm. and then you start your day looking at the list and try to work through that. Mm. Um, and anything left on the list can, you know, be prioritized again for the next day. And so it's this constant cycle of prioritization mm -hmm. and working off of a plan as opposed to letting the day uh, kind of take you down its own path. Yes, because it will. It will. <laughs> just, so many things is like, just jump right in there and, and, and take over your, your plans for the day for sure. And that's a, that's a great tip for sure. And something that I need to be a little <laughs> bit better about myself. We all could do better. Yes, yes, yes. I do take notes, but it's like, it's always something that is just like, oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. Let's go ahead and deal with that. Right. So then you're, you end up having to put that on the next day's note. Right, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, Rebecca Parks, thank you so much. Um, make sure you guys um, check out the website, support the USO in any way that you can. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this content to be useful and entertaining, do us a favor and hit the like button. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. You can stay up to date with new episodes that we post every week. See you in the next episode.